Hey, Dr. Christensen here with you. Did you know that high-carb diets can kill you and that low-fat diets are deadly? <laughs> Those are some of the headlines that came out here recently in the evaluation of the PURE study, the Prospective Urban Rural Epidemiology Study. And I first saw the headlines, and you know, I've not really thought about low-carb, high-carb, low-fat, high-fat as being important decision-makers. It's probably bigger about the quality of your fuel than these ratios of your fuel. But when this study came out, my first thought was, hey, if there's hard data suggesting that this is true, I would change my recommendations. I would completely change what I've been saying if this was enough data to overturn the data we had going into it from the past. And when I look deeply at the study, um, and I want to back up too, I see many groups to where they'll hold a certain stance. And whenever there's data contradicting their stance, they'll always be just defending it and saying, oh, this study was invalid, this study was bad, I'll ignore this study. There was a paper about lead being found in bone broth. And many came out saying silly things like, well, lead's not that harmful. Well, of course it is, but they had a big bias towards bone broth. So let me just throw that out there. And I read the study going into it saying, hey, I'm going to check this out. And whatever, however these cards lie, if this is good, hard data, I will take this into account and factor it into my recommendations in the future. Now, here's the central disconnect of the study. <laughs> it was a good study, and I'm not going to knock the study at all. I'm going to take it really at face value. This was a prospective study, which means that they defined this in advance and watched outcomes over the course of years. And it encompassed a large number of people over 18 different countries. They took a look at the ratio of carbs and fats in the diet and also types of fats, you know, saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and they evaluated how these things affected total mortality and cardiovascular mortality. So there were conclusions showing that the highest carb groups had higher rates of mortality. And they also saw that the lowest fat groups had higher rates of mortality. They also had a finding that the lowest saturated fat groups had higher risk of stroke disease. So fascinating stuff, and I completely take it at face value. There's always ways you can argue against epidemiology, but unless you've got stronger data, we still need to go with that and respect it. And that's what I would recommend for this. But here's the disconnect. <laughs> they were looking at 18 countries, mostly Asian countries, and these countries in general had lower rates of cardiovascular disease and lower rates of mortality than we do in the West. These are also countries that eat quite differently than we do. The typical Westerner consumes about, in America, about 35 to 37 percent calories from fat. They consume about 10 to 15 percent calories from protein, and typically about 40 to 50 percent calories from carbohydrate. So that's the average American diet. So when they talk about low-fat diets being bad, they were not referring to the context of American diets. It was the context of these Asian diets. So the high-carb diets that were deadly, that raised the death risk, well, what did that mean? What were they calling a high-carb diet in terms of actual numbers? Was it 40%, 50%, like many might say today would be a high-carb diet? No, the ones that caused more death were in the 67 to 74% range of carbohydrates, some even 78% carbohydrate and higher. 78% carbohydrate. So what does that look like in terms of an actual meal? Honestly, that looks like a meal of noodles or rice or bread and some, some maybe some greens shriveled on, sprinkled on, and that's about it. Really not much other food. You know, if you're having any substantial amount of vegetables or cooking oil or nuts and seeds or poultry or seafood in any unreasonable quantity, you cannot consume 78% of your calories from carbohydrate. That's pretty much a starch-only diet. I would not advocate that, nor would many others. In terms of carbohydrate, this group study found that the population had the lowest rates of mortality in the spectrum of what they studied were on the lower side of carbohydrate. And that actually ended up being about 55 to 60% carbohydrate had the lowest rate of mortality. Many people consume more than that and some consumed a little bit less, but that was the sweet spot for mortality. That's higher right now than the average American diet. And popular low-carb or paleo diets, that's much higher than those diets are for the lowest rates of mortality. So let's talk about fat for a little bit. 
So at what threshold did low fat become dangerous? I, I read the original study. I read the actual document itself. It's readily available. And you can see these curves, how it played out. Well, so low fat started causing high risk of mortality when you got below 10% of calories from fat. I see so many talking about, oh, I've got to add coconut oil to my shake. I've got to add butter to my coffee. I've got to do all these things to ensure that I'm getting adequate amounts of fat. Guess what? You couldn't get that low in fat if you're consuming any fat in your diet. Uh, diets like the most restrictive fat-free diets are the only way you can approach that 10% of fat calories. So if you're consuming no fatty fish, nuts or seeds, animal products, dairy foods, oil, cooking oils, none whatsoever, only then do you approach that 10% of calories. And I would not suggest cutting those foods out. Those are nice foods that give us a lot of good things that are really useful for us to have. But the mistake that the headlines in the American media made people think about is that, oh my God, I'm going to run out on fat, of fat and die. If I get too little fat in my diet, I'm going to die. Like, well, you're not at risk for that. Right now, the average American is way above that threshold. And in fact, the study showed that in their analysis, the highest fat diets also had more mortality. And the highest fat diets were in the ranges close to where many Americans are on standard diets. And those on low carbon paleo diets commonly can be exceeding 35, 40, 50 percent, 60, 70 percent of fat calories. Everything above the mid-30s the mid and the 40s in this study showed higher risk of mortality. So I think it's just time to stop thinking about carbs and fats as good and bad and knowing that, hey, guess what? We need both. <laughs> News alert, we need both. And we need reasonable amounts of both. And that the extremes on either are probably a bad idea. We need some of both of these foods. So saturated fat, also the big headline that some pulled out of that, that low saturated fat meant more stroke risk. I thought about that, and that was surprising to me. And what was the actual threshold in the study? What were the actual details? Well, that threshold that caused more stroke risk was less than 2% saturated fat. Honestly, same thing about the fat-free. If you're consuming a handful of walnuts per day, you're going to get more than 2% of your calories from saturated fat. So the data about nuts and seeds, avocados, fatty fish, having health-promoting properties is just incontrovertible. These are foods that are good for us. They help us. And they have some naturally occurring saturated fats. So the only diets that were that lacking in saturated fats would have been lacking in these wonderful, important foods. Like completely lacking. I don't mean low. I mean devoid of them. So most Americans right now are running in the 15% or more saturated fat intake. And this study showed that when you got above 13, there was higher rates of mortality. Many in the paleo worlds and the keto worlds can easily be 20-30% saturated fat or more. And the data about that has shown clear high risk of mortality. So saturated fat is not bad. That's not my message. And it's not, it's not a villain and it's not a savior. And that's true of all food categories. There's no goods or bads. It's all just about ratios and proportions and best amounts. And really variety and reasonable variety. You want the bulk of your diet to come from healthy plant foods. And I would argue, too, good carbs. So traditional foods, rice, legumes, other beans, intact whole grains, vegetable starches, tubers. For human history, these have made up the bulk of our calories. And this study, too, showed those that consumed the bulk of their calories from these types of foods, from carbohydrate, had the lowest rates of all death. That doesn't mean that carbs are all you want to eat. You don't want to eat only carbohydrate at 78% of your calories. You want variety. But the headlines were such a disconnect between the reality of the article. So not debating the article. It was good science, taking it at face value. But really, just what they talked about was within their range of high carb, low carb, the low was better. And their studied range of high fat, low fat, the higher was better. But that was not the American population, and that was not the low-carb paleo populations they studied. They studied populations that many groups of which had almost nothing but carbohydrate. So the real message was that is that a diet that has the main caloric input from healthy carbs and has some food variety does better than a diet that's only carbohydrate and maybe processed carbohydrate. So pretty reasonable stuff.
and honestly more of a vindication towards a balanced approach than one would think otherwise. By no means is it a validation of extreme diets, be they high fat, low carb, or extreme high fat, or extreme high carb and extreme low fat. It's really a vindication but towards simple moderate diets, including good carbohydrates as the main source of calories. So I think that was a bit of a rant. <laughs> But, but really, balance. We need foods. We need lots of good foods. We need varieties of them. And we shouldn't be afraid of them. But we also shouldn't think that any of them are magic and we want to build our diet solely around them. Dr. Christensen here. I'm going to step off the soapbox. I'll be back with you really soon. Bye-bye.